Hi, I'm Richard Seitz, alongside Angel Green, for another episode of Iterations, a video blog from Allen Interactions. This week's topic, I want to kind of play off of my blog post from last week, which was titled, We Need to Put Some More Design in Instructional Design. And I know that sounds kind of funny, and usually when we have conversations, design comes out as this effort to construct things. Mm -hmm. And really, especially here at Allen Interactions, we think there's a specific part of the effort that is design brainstorming and creating ideas and activities and considering what will improve the learner's performance, make things meaningful, memorable, motivational. And we happen to use the design principles of context, challenge, activity, and feedback. So that's when we say design is what we mean. But you know, you and I talk about this all the time. Right. That that we so often hear things are, you know, the, a good design because a process ran smoothly. And it's it's kind of tough because we go out and talk about SAM a lot, mm -hmm. which is a process, but it's a process that supports our design principles. Yes. So what do we, you normally see when you're out working with clients in terms of design? Well, I think there's a misconception of what is instructional design. Yeah. So in order for me to describe what instructional design is in our belief, it helps to say what it's not. Mm -hmm. And so instructional design is not a list of objectives at the beginning of a course. It's not having a, a list of questions that need to be answered by an employee and get an 80% to pass. It's, so it's really not instructional materials design, right. or I should say it really is when most people talk about it, and yes. those kind of things. Right. But the, when we're talking about it, the design of instruction or instructional design, we really mean the creative treatment that we are going to provide learners that learning experience. Right, right. So instructional design then is to focus on performance. It's to ask the questions of the subject matter experts, the stakeholders, the people in the room, what do people need to be able to do in their jobs? They need, what do they need to be able to contemplate? What do they need to be able to think about? What considerations do they need to be making in their day-to-day -day activities? And then build something that mimics that. Right, that, that, that's the design part of it, is right. identifying and finding those moments and creating those moments and strategies to create those moments and design principles dri driven to those moments. Mm -hmm. Converting a PowerPoint is not instructional design. No. Um, it, creating a nice page turner that provides information to a learner, while may seem be, to be in the realm of instruction, really the majority of that effort is media design or instructional materials design right uh, and nowadays with the rapid development tools it's really just you know materials development there's no design to it at all with the templates and the things that you can use right, right. and it's not that those are bad always or no. that's the situation but i think when we're saying instructional design we really want to push each other and and everyone here at allen interactions and everyone in our industry, right. to really design things for learners for the purpose of learning. Right, right. We have to be honest with ourselves. If it's just converting a PowerPoint presentation, there's enough tools now out there that anybody can convert a, right. a PowerPoint presentation and put that on the web and call it e-learning. We, as stuff. instructional designers, need to take a step back and look at the, the strategy, the approach, the performance, all of those things to become a partner, to not be seen as a cost center, to be seen as a value add to our organizations, to our clients, to whoever it is that we're building this learning for, and say, look, we're going to look for performance change methods, yeah. and we're going to have challenge-based instruction that mm. will get us to change that performance. You know, Michael always says that Addy tells us what we need to do, right. and Sam challenges us to say, why not? Right. And I think that instructional design is more of the art of why not. Mm -hmm. Because we, there are so many what's that we can do. We can convert PowerPoints. We can upload documents. We can create page turners. We can have a multiple choice question every five or six pages or slides or whatever you want. And these are principles of of material development, right. but they may not necessarily be design principles. And I think that really by stopping and going, why would we not do this and getting a good answer is really the part of the design that we need to work more towards. And it's the, what differentiates design from process. Right. And it's, to, it's very difficult. SAM is an iterative agile process for the design and development of instruction. Its sole purpose is to provide us the greatest opportunity to achieve quality design, which is defined by meaningful, memorable, motivational, context, challenge, activity, feedback. Right. It is there solely for the purpose of, of generating that opportunity for us. Mm -hmm. 
and not that if we would just go do Sam to Sam for Sam's sake. No, I mean, if you're going to create a page turner PowerPoint online, then Sam would be a, a gigantic waste of effort. <laughs> there are other design processes that would work a lot better. Perhaps, perhaps. But if you're looking to create engagement of your mm -hmm. learners, and that's not engaging, that doesn't mean that there's words flying in on screen or that every three slides that there's a multiple choice question, but that learners are engaged in, a, in an activity and are performing and are challenging beliefs that they might have had before and are asked to make these you know, cognitive decisions in the moment and in a context that makes sense for them, that's engagement of learners. And so we need to be looking and pushing for those moments to create that employee learner engagement in the course. Absolutely, and that's where design yeah. comes in. You can have a process in place, but the design and those, those activities that you do is the art of our work, right. and we should focus on building more of that. Right. One term that Angel and I both struggle with is instructionally sound. Yes. And too often that means that checklist criteria have been met in the construction of an instructional material or instructional object. We don't like that a lot. No. <laughs> we want to see what you think about it. So leave us some comments on what does instructionally sound mean to you? And join us next time for another episode of Iterations. Bye-bye.